So we're really thinking about what drives our actions, what motivates, what makes us move. And one of the, the, the big questions is how much of it is biological versus how much is choice? How much is us actually choosing what we do or how we feel or how we react to situations? And again, most psychologists believe that there is no free will. This, this choice is very limited uh, and you're choosing for a very small amount of things because there's so many biological and physiological things happening in your mind and body that are really driving your actions. So many factors dri that drive our behavior, for example, hunger is controlled by our hypothalamus. This is a biological motivator. So hunger is really, really powerful drive. Um, they did studies during World War II on some uh, volunteer uh, people that are guys that chose not to serve in World War II. And what they found out is, and they, they wanted to see how long they could go without eating or eating very small amounts of food and studying them through psychology and how they react. And what they found out is these guys basically sat there all day long talking about food. And their focus became so tunneled, uh, tunneled so that they zoomed in on food all the time. They talk about the restaurants they'd eat at, what's their favorite food. All they did was is focus on food. Food is a huge driver of our body. We underestimate when maybe we're hungry or not. So under this set point theory, our hypothalamus wants to maintain an optimum body weight. So set point theory is that your body is very much like your, this wanting this homostasis, this idea that you want complete balance and you want to make sure that you have the optimal body weight. So naturally, we would eat when we're hungry and not, not eat when we're not hungry. So I don't know if you guys have little brothers or sisters, but they tell you, like, not to force kids to eat because then they'll start overeating. And kids will eat when they're hungry. Well, that's probably the natural state of things. Now, what other factors have really influenced uh, us is obviously what we eat. So if we're talking about hunter-gatherers and our ancestors for millions of years, they would eat things like fruits, vegetables. Uh, they would eat berries and nuts and eat fresh fish, meat. We add a lot of unnatural things into our diet, and we've talked about how salt and sugar are very uncommon in nature and very addictive mentally. Your body will crave salt and sugar. Once you get salt and sugar going in your system, you constantly want it. And that's why there's some arguments that fast food companies, knowing the psychology of the mind and the body, they'll purposely put lots of salt and sugar in food that doesn't really have salt and sugar. Like your cheeseburger will have tons and tons of salt in it, or lots of sugar in a cheeseburger. And that's on purpose to drive uh, desire for the product. So some researchers believe that our, our behavior has to do more with learning and cognition than just our hypothalamus and biological needs. So we learn our eating patterns. And we just talked about environmental factors. So uh, Americans, <clears throat> for many years, we were the most o overweight and obese uh, people in the world. Well. That's actually changed. We've been surpassed by Mexico. And, but, and one of the reasons that people believe are the, the kind of points that Mexico and America are the top overweight groups uh, of people in the world, again, it has to do with our diet. We drink a lot of soda, too. Soda has huge amounts of sugar in it, and it, it, um, it causes a, really a big cause of obesity. Some research says that like, if you would stop drinking soda altogether, the average American would lose something like 20 pounds a year in weight. So with cheap food that is um, subsidized by the government and biased towards lots of salt and sugar, people in Mexico very, eating very similar foods to America were eating lots of salt, lots of sugar, drinking tons of soda, eating processed food. And the question is, is that choice-based though? How much is that is choice-based? And then you could get into other philosophical discussions on, uh, well, government is subsidizing processed foods and maybe not subsidizing healthy foods enough. So broccoli should basically be free at the grocery store would be one argument. Meanwhile, pizza rolls should be really expensive because it's not good for you and it's processed. However, the way our food system set up, uh, anything that's corn-based is really cheap in America. And a lot of times fruits and vegetables are expensive and in in poor neighborhoods like uh, north st louis for example they have what are called food deserts where if you go to grocery stores there almost there is no fresh fruits or vegetables so people get upset 
uh, and blame people for choosing to eat unhealthy. Well, if you live in an area where you don't have a car and there's no fruits and vegetables or fresh fruit or vegetables at the grocery store, you're probably not going to eat a lot of healthy foods. So that's the question is how much of it is your diet and how much is the set point theory where your body is constantly trying to reach up your optimum body weight? What drives our actions in terms of other factors are you have external factors that are shape, color, taste of food. You have external things are things that push on us and make us want to eat certain foods, but also we talk about external actions. And then you have internal actions, your internal hunger cues. Your hypothalamus is telling you you're hungry. And there's there's uh, possible uh, issues that we can have with this. So, for example, you could actually eat too fast that your hypothalamus can't catch up with you. So if you've ever heard people say, hey, you should chew your food 20-something times or 30 times before you swallow, that's actually a really good rule of thumb because by chewing your food and taking your time, your brain will actually catch up with the fact that you're eating um, your food and it processing that I'm full. I'm not I'm not hungry anymore. I don't need any more food. But if you eat really, really fast, and that's what fast food again can drive this, then you will tend to think, oh, I'm still hungry. I can eat more. And you set this these goals, you're almost like eating way too much food. Now, this Garcia effect is when we have an unpleasant experience with the food and it can even cause us to feel nausea or sick. So I think I told you a story that when I was in first and second grade, I would eat like bologna sandwiches with mayonnaise every day. Now I can't even think about it. One day my mom would make them every day for me because that's what I wanted and I was stubborn. And one day I got sick and I actually threw up at lunch. And after that, I cannot go anywhere near a bologna man mayonnaise sandwich. Either one of the, and both of those foods still today make me a little woozy thinking about them. Well, that would be what's called the Garcia effect, that we have this, this negative effect with food. And you can see external internal shapes uh, are choices. So kids, for example, they start to get pickier on food and color and, and taste in food. Well, the question is, is it environmental? Meaning, well, if you're always eating processed food like chicken nuggets and pizza all day, does broccoli look weird to you? Uh, or is it internal? Is it in your brain that you want to eat bad foods because they taste good or they have lots of salt and sugar? And these are a lot of factors that, a lot, uh, that go into things like eating and our choices on eating. Now we're going to go into what's called eating disorders. So eating disorders, uh, our culture shape our food preferences. So we have some cultures that eat a lot healthier. For example, the French, they'll actually spend lunch uh, as a course in school where they spend over an hour eating a several course meal where they even they, they only drink water they don't have any so uh, sh soda for sure very expensive I've been to France and Europe and soda is super expensive it's actually cheaper to buy alcohol in a lot of cases than to get soda um, and it that actually might drive people not to drink lots of soda or it's a treat or something they have over there where in America I can go to quick trip and I can drink like three gallons of soda sometimes unlimited soda when i go to the store or i go to quick trip i can get like these super duper duper gulps of soda now one eating disorder that results is called bulimia it's when people eat huge amounts of food in a short period of time bulimics are obsessed with weight and tend to be women uh food eating disorders tend to be much more biased towards women than men men do have can have eating disorders and that raises questions on how much of this is cultural uh, and how much of this is, is brought on by media and outside influence. However, there are people pre that probably have genetic predisposition where they tend to be uh, more likely to have eating disorders. And we saw in the video that one thing that seems to be common is tends to be perfectionist. People tend to be very high expectations for themselves or maybe there's some issues with control. And there's a lot of other issues going on that a therapist would, would work with the person on. Bulimics will eat tons and tons of food, and then they'll, they'll usually vomit or try to get rid of the food uh, by taking medicine to go to the bathroom. And get in, and uh, this is one way of forcing themselves to lose weight. Anorexia nervosa is a mental disease when people starve themselves below 85% of their body weight. Uh, anorexics tend to be women as well. And there's been some famous artists that have dealt with uh, eating disorders. Uh, Famous actresses like Felicity and uh, one of the lead singers of the Carpenters, they would actually, she starved herself to death 
Um, and you can see that people have these eating disorders where they constantly obsess over food and have control issues. And again, we find this more in women. The vast majority are women. Now, obesity is when a person is at least 100 pounds over their normal body weight, and this is unhealthy. Obesity usually is due to poor eating habits, but it can also be caused by genetic predispositions. So, for example, you can have thyroid issues or other issues, uh, and that, that can cause a lot of health issues because when your body is carrying so much extra weight, that puts a lot of strain on your heart and increases things like heart attacks and strokes and other health issues. So it's important to try to understand these disorders of everybody from eating not enough or making themselves throw up the food to eating too much food. And that psychology can talk about how you can work with uh, helping people motivate them to have healthy diets and they'll feel better and they eat healthier and they'll feel better and enjoy life more.